Hi, Erigibo, Erigibo.com, and today I'm going to present you this camera, the Fujifilm X-E1, a camera from the year 2012. So let's start. So a brief introduction about this camera. Um, first, uh, 1,000 and 1 million thank you to Photosphere.com because they gave it to me uh, for free. It was a gift. Uh, the lens now, this is a Viltrox 1.4, uh, 33 millimeter 1.4 I'm reviewing. I will, uh, you will see the review really soon. But uh, I speak about the camera, I told them, uh, do you have any old Fuji film you don't want anymore or you cannot sell or it's too old to be sold or it's broken or, or not really nice, broken now but not too nice. They said, well, we have a brand new XE1 that is unsold, so we're not going to sell it now. So if you want, you, you keep it. It was a demo camera, so it has not many shots anyway, so no problem. So thank you very much. So the, the, the thing about this uh, camera is not, uh, I will give you some uh, features, okay, specifications but it's also maybe to open the eye of many people uh, regarding how camera get older because uh, people nowadays think that a camera from the year 2012 is not usable anymore so we're going to see if it is or not so let's carry on so in 2012 or 2011 i'm not sure uh, the x pro one came out and it was the first uh, Fujifilm camera with a, uh, with a, a rangefinder look, although it was not a rangefinder, but it looked like one, and uh, an optical viewfinder. In 2012, this one came out, the X-E1, but the difference is that the viewfinder is only uh, electronics. Uh, you don't have optical viewfinder, okay? It's not the only difference, but this is the one, uh, when you look at the look, the rangefinder look also, you don't have uh, an, uh, an optical viewfinder. So, uh, I'm going to give you some specs, so, uh, and my opinion about, about this camera. So, it was, it is, this one it is, it was then, okay, it still is, a 16.3 megapixel sensor. Many people think that 16.3 megapixels is uh, too little nowadays, but I'm still working for Olympus OMD uh, 5 Mark II from the year 2016, and they have also 16 million megapixels. I work uh, professionally with them, it's no problem to me. I also have a friend who has a massive picture of one meter by one and a half, and it's made, it was made with the Canon uh, 300D with five million pixel, five million pixel only, and uh, it's perfect. If you look at the right distance, I mean, normally a picture of one by uh, one and a half meter, you should uh, look at one meter away. So you don't see the problems. You don't see there is problems. You, you actually there are no problems. It looks okay. Okay, so so 16 million is enough. The sensor they use is the Xtrans One, the same as the X Pro One, and uh, this sensor is uh, is strange. Like every year, every time uh, Fujifilm has updated the sensor until the Xtrans Four, the Xtrans Four that is what's in the XT4 and also on the uh, XE4, okay, and on the X Pro Three, I think. Uh, until this one, people were complaining. They thought that the first version, which is this one, was better, that a more an analog look, more film look. They preferred it, okay? And then the version two, version three, people was not, were not as convinced, okay? So it's true that you get more uh, resolution with the other one, okay? But people still really love this x one. You have a sensor cleaning system, which is good. It was there already in 2012. You have uh, one slot uh, of mem uh, for memory card, a UHS-1. You have uh, the Fujifilm X-Mount, which is for Fujifilm lenses, but also a compatible one like this Viltrox I will review soon, or Maker, or TT Artisan, or 7 Artisan. So you have more choice nowadays, but it's X-Mount. The ISO, the ISO, the native goes from 200 up to 6400, and surprisingly, uh, it's not that bad. When you look at 1600 uh, ISO, it looks okay. 3200 is also usable uh, with a bit of work, okay? So uh, I think it, it looks okay, it's surprising. Also, it's because with only 16 million uh, megapixels, pixels were larger, and uh, being larger make them uh, less uh, noisy uh, in low light or with high ISO. So, that's a good point. You can also force them down to 100 ISO or up to 12,800 or 25,600, okay? So ISO is usable. The autofocus is a contrast detection uh, autofocus. So it's not that good in low light. Uh, it's already had uh, detecting faces, okay? And you have 49 
uh, uh, focusing point. For many people, uh, 49 focusing point is really too little, it's ridiculous. For me, it's fine because I always use one anyway. But it's true that if you do uh, action photography and uh, people moving all across the frame, maybe it's interesting to have more points, but to me, it's enough for what I do, okay? The speed uh, from 30 seconds up to 1 4 thousandths of a second and you have bulb mode up to 16 minutes. You have a small integrated flash here. Okay, this is so small that the light quality is really harsh, really horrible, let's say it, horrible. You can still uh, orient it towards the, 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 to the ceiling if you want to make some uh, bounce uh, lighting. Otherwise, you have a standard uh, uh, hot shoe and you put, can put a proper flash in there. The flash synchro is 1 180th of a second which is too little to me, I prefer to have a 250th of a second but Fujifilm still makes some camera with 180th of a second so uh, well what can I say before 12, 2012 that's okay to me. You have a compensation button here minus two plus two okay so you can compensate then you have a function button just one at a time you can actually uh, configure and then you have the q menus for quick access to uh, the settings and it's really practical uh, now many cameras have a quick access button also but fuji was among the first one to have that kind of a quick access okay you can do bracketing uh, like exposure bracketing, film bracketing, as you may know, uh, Fujifilm is famous for the film simulation. So you can pick three film simulation and bracket and you have three versions of your picture. ISO bracketing, also a dynamic range bracketing. If we look at burst rate, uh, you can shoot up to six frames per second, which sounds really little. But in 2012, I was using uh, Canon 5D Mark II and Mark III and uh, actually uh, mark 2 yeah sure mark 3 i'm not sure when it came out okay but uh it was like eight frames per second so if you compare it's surprising that this kind of camera that cost about at that time off of what cost uh, the 5d mark 2 or 5d mark 3 had a burst rate this way it was really okay this camera has 10 film simulation uh like provia velvia all that kind of thing and nowadays uh, the latest one uh, the uh, fujifilm gfx uh, 50s mark ii i reviewed here well, i reviewed i spoke about didn't review it yet as 19 and i think the xt4 has 18 so they already had 10 simulation uh, film simulation so that was not bad at that time you have timer from 10 to uh, 10 seconds then the viewfinder is 100 percent so what you see is really what you get okay if you see a bad picture you get a really bad picture <laughs> okay but what you see what you get surface wise okay if we speak about the screen the screen is, uh, you cannot orient it, it, can't move it, nothing. It's only 2.8 uh, inches. We, nowadays, it's usual to have 3 or more inches, so 2.8, and it's not touchable. So, uh, is it a problem? Well, if you, man, if, you, if you really like to use touchable screen, maybe it's a problem, but at that time, it was not because there were not, there were not that many cameras with touchable screen anyway, okay? Let's speak about video. Uh, well, it's a bit uh, laughable, the video, because uh, you have Full HD 1080, so that's not really a problem. I did not expect 4K then, obviously. You can only go up to 24 uh, frames per second. You don't have uh, 25 or 30, so it means if you're in the uh, US, for example, with a 60 Hertz uh, electricity, that's fine. But if you're in Europe or Australia with a 50 Hertz per second, then you get some flickering. You would need to have 25 frames per second. So. Uh, for me, it's not usable. Uh, for some people, it's okay, but I don't think, I don't know then, but uh, at that time, I think no one was buying Fujifilm for uh, video anyway at that time, and, and nowadays not that many either, okay? But to me, it's not a problem because I would not use this camera for video. But maybe when you travel, you make to make a, you want to make a small small clip, that would be a short clip, that would be fine. By the way, you can record 29 minutes uh, without interruption. You also have a scene mode and also panoramic. I made some picture, uh, I'll show you here, the panoramic, for example, okay, I showed them in another video also. You have focus peaking. It means that when you actually uh, go manual mode, you can see where your focusing is being made. So this is a Viltrox autofocus lens, but if you had a manual lens like TT uh, Artisan or 7 Artisan or Maker, that's useful to be able to see where uh, the focus peaking is being made. Uh, uh, where the focus is being made, you have some small dots that uh, light and you actually see where, where you're focusing. The 
problem is only white, white. You don't have any other color for this point. You can actually convert your raw file directly in the camera. So if you don't want to process uh, on your computer, you can uh, process here from a uh, raw to JPEG. Connectivity, USB 2, mini HDMI, and you have a microphone connector, but it's 2.5 millimeter, which is not standard. You actually need a small cable uh, to convert to 3.5 millimeter. Uh, Fujifilm was selling this cable at that time. The weight, 350 grams, which is really light and with battery and SD card. And the size, as you can see, is not that big. If you look at my hand, okay, it's not that big. Well, this lens is big, okay, but the, the camera is not big. You have a small grip, it's really nice to have in hand. Yeah, I really like it. It's not weather sealed, uh, dust sealed, it's not. So it may be a problem, depends where you're going to use it. And the battery will last around 350 pictures, which is not bad for that time, uh, because uh, uh, the XE4 doesn't do uh, much better, okay? Uh, and by the way, at that time, Mr. Fujifilm would include a proper charger with the, with their camera, okay, with his cameras. Uh, you actually remove the battery, place it in the charger, and you can carry on working with another battery or walking around with another battery. Nowadays, you must buy this uh, uh, charger optionally, and uh, they only give you any kind of charger. They give you just a small cable, most of Fujifilm cameras, okay? A cable to plug into your uh, smartphone uh, charger. So let's speak about why in 2021. Is it good? How is it? Can I use it? Does it make sense to buy it? Well, in 2012, it cost more than a thousand euros. Nowadays, secondhand, you find it from 100 to 150 euros. So uh, you've, uh, price has dropped like 90%. So uh, my question is, if you could use this camera in 2012 to make many things, travel, photography, weddings, many things, what has changed in uh, landscape, what has changed in uh, traveling, what has changed in weddings that make this camera not usable? Nothing. It means that unless you change your style of uh, pictures and now you want to uh, do uh, sport photography or night photography or things you didn't do before, maybe you need to have a different camera but if your style of picture is the same as in the year 2012 there is nothing that stops you from getting this camera instead of a recent more recent camera the only thing, reason will be the reason will not be image quality the image quality is here with this camera the reason is probably commodity faster autofocus uh, maybe more resolution you need or maybe having few things better that would be the reason okay otherwise this camera is okay film simulation really when I use this camera uh, with film simulation on also also it gives you a JPEG I still use my parachute of having a raw version anyway because can I get both uh, I really understand why some people are in love with Fujifilm JPEG and film simulation because really uh, it's like the film uh, era, you actually get, pick the film you want to have the look you want, and then you concentrate on making picture. You forget about the rest, okay? Nowadays, we always think about processing all this, all that, and we forget to make the picture, okay? We we'll make the picture, but we forget to concentrate on making the picture. So I understand why so many people use Fujifilm in JPEG with film simulation. Actually, you have some Fuji film simulation in there. You can also use recipes. It means you actually configure, uh, you, s you put your setting of the camera to give the look you want to your picture. And you don't have to worry about it. So uh, you just make pictures. So I've made several pictures when I was in Fuerteventura and also some in Tenerife with the Kodak look, uh, Kodak Portra look, which is not included in this camera. But uh, there is a website called uh, Fuji X Weekly and there were some recipes how to configure the camera to have this look so it really looks like a Kodak portrait really similar so I just concentrated on making picture I was forgetting about processing forgetting about the rest it was the way I wanted so I really enjoyed pick, making picture the same as you know, I am enjoying when I get my Leica uh, M4P out and with the film in there and I really enjoy the same way okay so I really love that second uh, many people are spending a lot of money on uh, entry-level cameras like 400 500 euros or more and uh, they don't get really a better quality than that uh, actually the image quality is probably better on this camera so you're better off getting a camera that old from year 2012 save a lot of money and get good lenses 
and then get a lot better result than an entry-level camera with a kit lens. Uh, maybe the to focus is not as fast, uh, things you are not as convinced, or you think that with 16 million pixels is not enough. Don't worry about that. It makes more sense to get this than an entry-level uh, camera of today, okay? It's better to buy that second-hand and spend your money on proper lenses, okay? And also uh, with the uh, adapter, lens adapter, you can use vintage lenses also that really match the, vi the vintage look of your film simulation. I'll give you a link of uh, re uh, here, a review I made of uh, uh, the KF Concept uh, adapters. They're really great and really enjoy making pictures with that in manual mode, okay? The JPEG are really clean. Obviously, you can work in RAW file if you want, but uh, the JPEG are really good. And uh, the size and weight make it, make it a really good camera. Many people uh, are really worried about getting their camera uh, lost or uh, stolen or broken. And uh, when you spend a lower budget, you're not as worried. You enjoy more making pictures with your camera and bring it anywhere. And if, you get, if it gets stolen or broken or lost, you're not crying as much as if it was a 2000 euro camera. So what are the negative points in my opinion with this camera? I think this camera uh, can, the way I've used this one, you can use it as a ready-made picture. When you finish your picture, it's finished. Your JPEG is there with the film simulation you wanted, that's it. So it would be really good to have Wi-Fi to upload directly your uh, picture to your smartphone and then to social networks that would be really practical for that you have to uh, go for the xe2 i think that has wi-fi and uh, that would be a good motivation to get a bit better a bit newer camera than that one although some people complain about the sensor of the uh, xe2 they prefer this one okay then focus picking if you're going to do film simulation in black and white then you see your picture in black and white here uh, while making the picture if you work in RAW, no, but if you work in film simulation, black and white, you do have that. So if you're going to use a manual focusing uh, lens, that's a problem because it has only white dots. So it's a bit hard to see exactly where you are focusing. Uh, the X-E2 actually has the option to pick a color for your uh, focus picking, like yellow, red, blue, green, I can't remember what color they are, okay? So if you're going to work with a black and white film simulation, maybe a newer camera is a bit better. You don't get don't need to get the latest okay an xc2 would be fine it's a bit more expensive but not much more expensive the video side maybe having a 25 frames per second would be good for people who want to make a quick clip and also one thing i miss is in my olympus i've got a uh, highlights and uh, shadow warning and you don't have this here you have to wait for the following model to get a zebra to indicate where you have highlights or uh, underexposed. So, uh, that would be good. You have a histogram, but you don't get this real-time uh, warning. So I would have loved it, okay? But, well, this camera came out four years before my Olympus, so I can't try either. But it's still a fantastic camera. So honestly, I completely recommend you get a camera like this uh, to use it the way I just said. And actually, if, uh, if my Olympus uh, one day were broken, I could not use them one day, I could perfectly do the job with that. I, I would have no problem to make my fashion photography or portrait photography or landscape photography with this. Maybe the quality, uh, if we look at details uh, with high resolution, would not be as good. But for what I do, that would be fine, okay? And I would say that for 90% of people, this camera is fine. So honestly, uh, maybe instead of spending a lot of money on a nowadays camera, you better look at the second-hand market and get this one. But if you want a better to focus and uh, focus, uh, focusing, uh, focus picking uh, points in other color, then you can get the X-E2S. Uh, the S one has uh, phase detection. So it means the autofocus is a bit better. And maybe you can find it for 250, 300 euros. So that's fine, okay? But otherwise, this is perfect. You can still work in RAW if you want and forget about all the film simulation story I've told you. But honestly, I really love this camera. It's practical. I love my Olympus too. But this one is, uh, no, no, it's like some kind of magical. I love it, okay? I love my Olympus, don't worry. But I really love this camera. So uh, I'm really thankful to uh, Photosphere for 
giving me this camera soon i will review this lens i'll have to, I have to give back to them thank you for uh, to you for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks if you have not done it yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button on here so so and also a small bell if you click on the bell get notified when i upload a new video my website erigible.com if you have any question can leave a comment below i also leave you links of my gear on amazon also links to other part of my youtube channel and also a link to my paypal account in case you wanted to make a donation please take care of yourself and see you soon bye